David Cameron shortly before becoming British Prime Minister in 2010. I believe it's time we shone the light of transparency onto lobbying in our country and forced our politics to come clean. Now he's being asked to come clean. Two parliamentary committees are investigating Cameron's lobbying on behalf of Greensill Capital, a financial firm he worked for after he left office. Between March and June last year, Cameron and his staff sent 45 emails, texts and WhatsApp messages to ministers and officials. He says he wanted permission for Greensill to issue government-insured loans to help companies through the pandemic. The motivation for contacting the government was that I thought we had a really good idea for how to help, uh, how to help extending credit to thousands of businesses. Cameron says that in April last year, at the time of his intensive lobbying, he had no sense Greensill was close to failing. But company owner Lex Greensill himself, giving evidence to MPs this week, said he'd become aware of supply chain problems in March 2020 and discussed it with David Cameron. He was asked whether the furious lobbying was aimed at saving his firm that actually part of this push was to get cash into the business because there would have been clear concern about the future of the business at that point. Mr Chairman, I think it's important that I make something very clear that Greensill itself, and, and indeed as the Chancellor put in his letter that he wrote to you and the, and the Governor of the Bank of England, that Greensill at no time sought funding for itself. Cameron's lobbying included nine WhatsApp messages to Chancellor Rishi Sunak complaining the Treasury's objections to Greensill's application were nuts, as well as a dozen text messages to the Treasury's top civil servant. The previous year, Cameron and Lex Greensill had met Health Secretary Matt Hancock for a private drink to discuss a new payment scheme for National Health Service staff. Turning now to Greensill's proposals for our NHS, an app named Earned to pay doctors and nurses daily or weekly in advance. Do you accept that your lobbying of the NHS wasn't for its health, but for the health of Greensill's balance sheet? Um, I wouldn't accept that for one second because the... In the end, Cameron's lobbying was unsuccessful. Greensill Capital collapsed in March this year after its insurers withdrew their cover. That's jeopardised 5,000 steelmaking jobs in the UK because the bank was key lender to the firm Liberty Steel. One former minister has told MPs Greensill had elements of a Ponzi scheme, something David Cameron rejects. And while he accepts he should only have gone through official channels, he says he broke no rules. Nadine Barber, Al Jazeera.